Hello there, this is Alexander from SciencePress.net and this is the Teenage Engineering OP1 field. This is not gonna be a full review but just my thoughts after having this instrument for almost two years now. Did it survive the initial hype? Do I still use it? Do I still recommend it? Let's find out. So what is the OP1 field? It is a synthesizer, a drum machine, a sampler, it has effects, sequencers, and also a 4-track tape-inspired DAW. All-in-one, portable, battery-operated, beautiful little device. Like with many things, with music gear we tend to create a lot of expectations before getting something. We get influenced by YouTube videos, reviews, social media, so when it's time to get that thing, most of the time we get disappointed. So let me tell you my story with the OP1, starting from the original one. Almost 8 years ago I started thinking about getting an OP1. I was watching videos, I was reading reviews, and I really felt that this instrument would fit my workflow. But all the controversy around it made me have second thoughts about it. So it's 2017 and this thing was released, the Electron Digitact. I got super hyped about it and I think I was one of the first people in Greece that bought this thing. Fun fact, I remember paying around 550 euros for a brand new Digitact and only a few months ago before Digitact 2 was released, I think Electron was selling the original Digitact for around 900 euros inflation at its best. I used it a lot, it was the first thing I would grab when I was making music, but I never really clicked with it, so I still wanted an OP-1. However, in 2019, instead of buying an OP-1, I got this guy right here. This is the Organelle by Critter and Guitari, and this thing was marketed as a clear competitor to the OP-1. It has multiple synth engines, sequencers, effects, it's also really small and has a quirky design, I guess, so I fell for it. I paid 520 euros plus 180 euros in import taxes. While it has some very cool sounds, the workflow on this thing is borderline horrible, and I only have it because I could not really sell it at a reasonable price. So my itch for the OP1 was not cured and I decided to just go out and buy one. It was now 2021 and Teenage Engineering was selling the original OP1 for 1,400 euros. So I found one at a local synth shop and it was like 1,100 euros. So I made an order, although they didn't have stock. I waited and waited, one month goes by, two months. I talked to the guys and they told me that they tried to find one from Teenage Engineering but they could not do it and now it's January, February of 2022. Fast forward a couple of months, it's Super Booth 22 and Teenage Engineering announces the brand new OP1 field that cost 2000 euros. I gotta be honest and say that I also went through that phase of being angry about the price of the OP1 field but quickly after that I just got over it. I think it's pointless to be mad at a product's price. A company can do whatever they want and the market will eventually decide if they were right or wrong. So right after Superbooth 22, trying to postpone paying 2000 for an OP1 field, I went out and bought this thing right here. This is the Casio SK-1 and I found one in 
great condition for 150 euros so i just got it but more on this later and to close this story in late 2022 around two years ago i already had quite a successful website about music here sciencequares.net so teenage engineering decided to send me an op1 field for a review a five-year journey ended with a really beautiful happy ending so i'm not going to talk about its price i'll just say that now that i do have it i can honestly justify paying its price but i haven't so feel free to disregard that now let's just try and answer why i wanted an op1 so badly reason number one was the form factor only a few months ago my studio was a tiny little corner of my living room so space and gear size were deciding factors when it comes to buying new gear and the op1 is tiny it can fit everywhere so being so small was a huge plus and i'm sure that the same thing applies to a lot of you out there reason number two was this guy right here the casio sk1 this is one of my favorite synthesizers only because you can sample a single note and then play that chromatically using the keyboard i love its lo-fi sound but the bad thing is that you can only record one sound and once this turns off it's lost so you have to do that again that was really frustrating and i kind of wanted a way to be able to save those sounds and have them whenever i wanted so i was thinking more and more about the op1 because it's really good at doing that and reason number three was that i really wanted a way to quickly record ideas when i'm in the studio or not and i think that the tape in the op1 is one of the best ways to do that it's one of the best ways to just sketch a song or record a melody or a chord progression and then you can use those things when you're back in the studio and there are not a lot of devices that can do that thing so getting back to the expectations versus reality i knew that the op1 could do way more things than what i just described but i didn't really care about all those things they were just some very welcome bonuses so the op1 actually met all my expectations to 100 percent and gave me way more than i expected and i also discovered a lot more things that i love about this device before we go to the things i like and i don't like about the op1 field make sure to check out my preset packs made specifically for the op1 field i have three packs with 30 presets each and you can buy them separately or buy the full collection of 90 presets with an extra discount and if you want an extra discount to that you can use the code sq20 to get 20 percent off so let's now talk about the things i like and the things i don't like about the op1 op1's portability is really cool and i've actually taken this with me a lot of times outside of the studio but i don't really make music outside of this place the fact that it's tiny though is something i still appreciate even moving to this much bigger place even now space is important regarding to that i also have another reason that you might find stupid since i'm making a lot of video reviews especially for pedals the op1 is the easiest way to just grab a synth place it in the shot and just demo a pedal i know that most of you don't do that but it's also great to use for content creation for your social media because it looks beautiful and can be used anywhere second thing is that the op1 is in my opinion the best sample based synthesizer right now it's not the best groove box drum machine sampler but it's definitely the best device where you can just load a single note and create an instrument out of it it's super easy to do that you can just plug an instrument straight into the op1 you can use the onboard microphone or just load a sample from your laptop by the way i talk too much about the synth sampler but the synth sounds and the synth engines on the op1 are also amazing and there are lots of them and you can actually create some very very cool sounds with it the op1 is the perfect sketch pad and song starter you have synths samples drums effects sequencers but the thing that glues all those things together and creates the uniqueness of the op1 is the tape which is a feature i think it's widely misunderstood 
So we're going back again to the expectations versus reality thing. Yes, you can create a full song, fully produced song on the OP1 field, but you probably won't. And it's perfectly fine. To make a full song on the OP1, you have to go through a lot of editing and you have to go around a lot of limitations. So it's much easier and more productive to do that on a laptop using an actual DAW. Myself in two years, I've never finished a full song on the OP1 and I probably never will because I haven't even tried to do that. But what I still do is I use a tape as a looper to record all my ideas without the need of recording those things in my laptop. As you play with the OP1, once you have a good idea, you can just press record and grab that idea and put it into tape and then you can move to the next thing. You can add bass, you can add chords, you can do whatever you want and start sketching a song on the tape on the OP1 field. You start from a single loop that evolves into a musical idea and that musical idea can evolve into a full song idea in the end. Another really cool feature of the tape is since it's inspired by an actual 4-track tape recorder, you can speed up or down your loops and that transposes the tape but also changes the tempo and that changes the whole vibe and feeling of what you're working on. That alone is really really inspiring and I use it all the time when I'm recording some ideas on the OP1 field. As all things, the OP1 field is not perfect. There are a few things that I would love to change and I really hope that Teenage Engineering can address those things in the future. Number one has to do with the tape. The original OP1 had only one tape so you had to work with it. You didn't have additional tapes to store another song. So you had to erase everything and start all over again. But now with the OP1 field, you have eight tapes in total. And also the added functionality where you can change the tapes, vibe and sound. They have like a Porta Studio, a mini disc, a studio, a reel to reel thing that changes the overall sound and adds some noise to the mix. But the different tapes are not different projects. And what I mean by that is that all your presets, your eight presets that you can store for the synth and the drum stay there forever, even when you change the, your tape. So you have like eight sounds that you can store in here for the synth and for drums. And whichever tape you're working on, you still have the same eight presets for each section. I would love to have different sets presets for each tape or project because that way I could have like an ambient project where I have ambient presets for drums and synths, a house project, a whatever project I wanted to have and have also different presets for each project. I think that this thing would make my workflow much easier and faster with the OP1 because now I only have those eight presets and I have to go through the menu and find other ones if I want to change them. And now we're going to the drum sampler. The drum sampler works like this. You sample or import a single file that is up to 20 seconds. And then the OP1 chops that sample into slices and spreads it across the keyboard. That is fine and it's a very usual workflow for sampling. But what I would love to have is the ability through software or whatever to add my own samples for each key without having to upload a single file to do that, just like I can do on this too. So now if I want specific samples for the drum sampler, I have to create a file playing those sounds one by one in Ableton Live, then export that sound and put it into the OP1 so we can chop the sample and create you know, samples for each key. That is too much work and I don't really do that, so I would love to have the option of adding individual samples for each key. And last thing, which is not that important, but the OP1 has a lot of gain stages. You have your samples volume. If you're using samples, you have an additional volume in the envelope page, your tapes volume, your mixer, a drive at the end, and of course your volume knob. So you clip a lot. <laughs> I'm not an engineer, but I believe that a limiter at the end of your chain would probably solve this problem and you wouldn't have to worry about all those gain stages and balancing everything out. So to wrap things up, 
I think that the OP-1 field is an incredible piece of gear. It's not by accident that no one has ever made a clone of this thing or something that can do all the things the OP-1 can do. You have a lot of alternatives like the Polyan Play Plus, the Deluge, you have the new Yamaha Seek Track or even the very fresh Ableton Move but nothing can do all the things the OP-1 can do. And also the OP-1 does all those things in an intuitive and really elegant way that nothing can compete that. The design of the hardware but also the software is kind of genius and provides you with a level of immediacy that I've never experienced before. That is where I think the OP-1 wins every single time. It's the fastest piece of gear to get from an idea in your head to a recorded audio file and that's why this is the first thing that I would use when I'm in the studio just because it sounds good and it's super fast it cannot replace everything I have in my studio but it's a really really important part of it and to be honest if this place was on fire I think that this would be the first thing I would grab I often do an analogy for the OP-1 field with the airpods there are so many better earbuds in terms of sound, price, battery life, whatever, but those things here just work every single time. They're probably a bit overpriced like every other Apple product, but I always say that if I lose them, if I break them, if I have them in my pants and throw them into the washing machine like I did with the previous ones, I will just go out and buy them the next day. Simple as that. And I think that the same thing would happen if I happen to lose or break my OP-1. I think that I would just go out and buy it, even if I know that is very, very expensive, because it gives me things that nothing else can give me, and I just need it in my studio and in my workflow right now. I truly think that Teenage Engineering had a really clear vision about this instrument. We might think it happened by accident with the first OP-1, but they released the OP-1 field and they kept all the basic principles and workflow to the newer version. You're not gonna buy the OP-1 because it's the best synthesizer or the best sampler or the best portable DAW. You're gonna buy it because it's the absolute best at combining all those things into one beautiful package. It's definitely not for everyone, but if you're like me and you found the things I talked about really useful to your workflow, I think you're gonna love this. So do I still use the OP-1 field after two years? Every day. Do I love it? Yes, I do. It's probably my favorite piece of gear in my studio and I don't think that this will change in the near future. So if you found those things inspiring and this thing is within your budget, just go for it. Don't wait five years like I did. Anyway, thank you so much for being here once again. I hope you liked this video, if you did, just leave a like or subscribe to the channel, and I really hope to see you on the next one. Love you.